Hello everyone, in this example we are asked to solve the trigonometric equation, when is tangent of theta equal to 1? And so we can approach this very similar to how we approached our sine and cosine equations that we discussed earlier. However, for our tangent function, it's actually going to be a much simpler process. For our sine and cosine discussions, we talked about the unit circle as well as the independent graph of the sine and cosine functions. Well, when it comes to the tangent discussion and solving these tangent equations, we don't really need the unit circle. Just the graph of the tangent function will be enough. All right, so we want to figure out when does our tangent function have an output of positive 1, and we're ignoring the unit circle because, well, tangent is the ratio of the y and x coordinates, and that just becomes a little bit harder to identify than just a single x or y coordinate. So we're just going to look at the graph of our tangent function, and but we're going to see a lot of similarities in the process we use here. So to start off, when is tangent equal to 1? That's like when asking, when does the graph of our tangent function intersect the horizontal line at y equals 1? And well, our tangent function, just like sine and cosine, is periodic, so we'll get the solution to be repeated over and over and over, and we will have infinitely many solutions. The one big difference between our tangent function when compared to our sine and cosine functions that actually makes solving tangent equations a heck of a lot easier is our tangent function only goes through its range or its outputs once per period. Right, if you think about the uh, cosine graph, it starts at that maximum, goes down, and then starts coming back up and repeating those values as it returns to its maximum. And something similar happens for our sine function. Because sine and cosine kind of repeated these outputs multiple times per period, we had to be very careful about finding those second solutions within a period when trying to list or describe the infinitely many solutions we actually have. Well, for tangent, we don't have to worry about any of that. Tangent, it's much easier to solve. We find the first solution just by taking tangent inverse of both sides of our equation. So for this equation, we just have to take tangent inverse of 1. Now to find tangent inverse of 1, we might have to think back to our unit circle or maybe use a calculator to assist us. But what we should find or remember is that tangent inverse of 1 gives us pi over 4. So our first solution here corresponds to when x or the input theta to our tangent function is equal to pi over 4. Well, how do we get to our second solution or our third solution that we see in our picture over here? Well, these solutions are simply just one period away from that first solution we found. So now we have to remember what is the period of our tangent function. We can see that in our graph here. Remember, the period is not 2 pi like sine or cosine. Tangent has a period equal to pi before we perform any transformations to it. So our first solution comes from tangent inverse. And to get all the infinitely many other solutions, we just add an integer multiple of pi, or the period of our tangent function, to that first solution. So it's much easier than our basic sine or cosine equations, mainly because we don't have to consider trying to find that second solution within a period. All right, so let's go ahead and summarize then what our general solution to one of these basic tangent equations is going to look like. So if we're in the situation where we're trying to solve tangent of theta is equal to a single number a, then the solutions can always be listed by this set, the set of theta values such that theta is equal to tangent inverse of a plus n pi, where n is an integer. Remember, tangent inverse of a gives us our first solution. And this other business of adding n pi to our first solution simply moves us from that first period to a different period depending on the n value we choose. That'll land us at these other infinitely many solutions.